Hey guys, GameBoy3800 here, once again, back with the Alien Worm Mouse Mat, and that means we are going to be building some kind of computer. Now, I've been thinking about building this specific computer for many months now, ever since Phil's Computer Lab released a video of him replacing the cooler on an old NVIDIA GeForce uh, TI-44400, with some cheap Chinese one. So I thought, hmm. That card had a purple PCB. I would like to make an all purple build with old components. So, I started ordering up and gathering up components like uh, this motherboard right here. You can see it's an all purple motherboard. It's actually quite a stunningly purple motherboard. And it came with a processor. Do I still have it here? I thought I had the processor still around, but I stole it and I took it out to look at it because it was a 2.4 gigahertz chip. I was thinking, perfect. This will be the best 2002 computer because at the time, Pentium 4s were going up to 2.4 gigahertz. I was like, yes, that'll work fine. So, in order for it to be the best of 2002, I had to go and get this graphics card, this is a, a PNY GeForce 4Ti 4600. Uh, looks good, the fan spins nice, although the bearings are a bit bad, but who cares. Uh, powers on nice, but I tried all the display outputs here, it did not work. Uh, before I tested it though, I did research on this and found that it only had the AGP 4X slot. This is 8x compatible, so I thought, yeah, I want to get the best performance, so that's the story here. This board here works perfectly fine, by, by the way, so, yep. Uh, the video card didn't display anything, but at the time I didn't know that, so I bought this purple motherboard. I have no idea what processor is in this one, but uh, this has an 8x slot. Still MATX, and I was going to get a purple DIY PC case to put it all in. And it's got DDR1 stick. So I was thinking, hey, I could put 4 gigs of memory in this, no problem, be up and running within the day. But I tried everything, multiple confirmed working video cards in the AGP slot and PCI slots and the onboard video. Uh, I could not get this thing to post. I don't know what was up with it, but... Yeah, this is, I guess, a dead board or something needs to be fixed with, like, a jumper or something. Then, to make sure that all my video cards actually were working, I power them up on this machine. This board here works fine, and this is how I found out that this card is actually totally dead. Well, not totally dead. It powers up, but that's all it does. Here we can kind of see how the system would have looked had it ever been completed. So yeah, we have a dead TI-4600, a dead motherboard that would have worked good, and a confirmed working board that doesn't have the right slot. So at the end of it all, I was like, screw it. Let's go for something completely different, even though I already have all this hardware. I decided to go for it. Let's go for the best mid-spec early 2000s computer. So, and this is the I.O. shield for... This motherboard here that's working, gotta keep that there because that is for sale. So I've completely changed my mind with that. That purple system idea is history. So, what's up? Now I've come up with a new idea and we are going to be building that new idea. Here we are. This is an Asus board that's still wrapped up from the mail. And it is a bit different. The previous two motherboards over there were a stock at 478 for the second generation of Pentium 4 chips. This one is a little bit older than that. This uses the socket 423 for the first generation of Pentium 4 chips. 
Yeah, I'm going to have some trouble getting out of here because of all the plastic. So socket 423 was a very short-lived Intel socket. I believe it only lasted a year. Which if you consider how the 1150X socket has, well the same format has been around ever since the second generation of Intel chips. Or I guess even the first one with 1156 and then 1155 and then 1150 now 1151. Yay, there we go. Stupid plastic. There we go. So socket 423 looks very much like uh, the 397 socket or whatever they had before. Just with a bit more pins. Yeah, this, this is the I.O. shield. Let's take a look at the I.O. here. You can see on this Asus P4T motherboard, uh, it's pretty lacking. We only have PS2, serial parallel, and then a huge gap, and then <laughs> a couple of USBs. So, pretty limiting, but it was not the most expensive board of the day. I'm going to guess it was some kind of budget board. So, yeah. Next, we have the processor. Now, there were a good number of Pentium 4 chips for socket uh, 423. Ranging all the way from 1.3 to 2 gigahertz. So, uh, we are not going for the top of the range one here today. Instead, we're going for the bottom end. Because even then, the processor for gaming, not the most mission critical thing. I could have gone for a Pentium 3 chip because at the time they were still out and pretty cheap I would assume from Pentium 4 being released and yeah there it is it really is a very tiny chip on a huge huge uh, adapter board here very much like what Intel does nowadays with their X2 uh, X299 they stick a 1151 chip into a, an adapter like this and basically that's what they do so yeah, we're going to go ahead and get the retention arm lifted on the board it's not quite as easy as today with it being plastic you gotta be careful and then because of its mounting thing here and we gotta get it at the right angle, but there we go. So the chip has a gold triangle at one corner. Just as always, they've always been doing this. And which corner is it on the board here? I honestly don't know. I need to take a closer look. Alright, I see it. It's pretty faded, but it is in this corner. So let's go ahead, drop the CPU in. So let's right in, give it a wiggle to make sure it's in, and then bring down the retention arm. So that's much like Intel socket 478 and AMD, AM3, and AM4 sockets. That's very good to go. Next we need a cooler, so I still have this wrapped up as well, even though uh, in hindsight I did not need to keep it wrapped up because it's already in the box, it's still in the box. Here we go. I'm not sure if this will come with thermal paste automatically. If it does, it's probably going to be really old, and I'll replace it. So this is a socket 423 cooler. Let's, see, let's take a look at the box here. Does it say what it's for? Nope, it doesn't say really anything. It just says what 
what model it is here. Yeah. So here we are here. That's the kind of thermal paste we're looking at there. Uh, I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use some Arctic Silver. But I need to wipe that off first. And I need to get my rubbing alcohol bottle and some toilet paper or something to wipe it off with. So I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. Got some toilet paper. And it's on top of a rubbing alcohol container. We're just going to go ahead and wipe this chunky old stuff off. I have no idea how old or new it is. It says that the product itself is new, but how long has it been sitting in that box? You will never know. I know. I will also wipe off the CPU, even though I'm sure it's already been wiped clean, you can never be too sure. Wow, that is already quite dark. I don't know how it could have gotten so dark for being new. That was white thermal paste, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what could have happened there. It's quite puzzling. So you can see it's just a big aluminum heat sink, no copper or anything. I forget the TDP of this processor, but I don't believe it's too high. There's no way it can be as high as the 3.4 gigahertz of Prescott chips that came out much later. There we go. Now let's get the chip cleaned. installations I guess. So this is a 1.3 gigahertz chip and interestingly I found out after I bought it because I wanted to make this the best 2000 gaming computer but uh, interestingly enough the 1.3 gigahertz chip came out in 2001 later after the 1.4 gigahertz uh, launch chip. So I've turned this into the best 2001 computer and by the best, I mean average, mid-spec, 2001 computer. And that's the processor. Here's the cooler. The cooler itself has a couple of retention clips here. And the bracket here on the cooler has some clips on the side. So, what we would do, let's practice here without thermal paste. is go ahead and get look at this it's got several different little clips on there how exactly would this go on I have an idea would it go on like this and hold it down like that yes that is how so it would sit on the clip here get one side in and then the other and then get one side in and then the other it's not the most elegant solution but hey if it worked back then it'll work now also let's uh, look for our uh, CPU fan header now so that we don't need to look for it later aha we have two fan headers one here 
I got one there, and then you're one there, hiding behind some capacitors. Do we have any more hiding behind more capacitors? It does not look like it. Cool. Actually, now it's time for some Arctic Silver. I got a comment on one of my previous videos saying that they, uh, that you should be careful with Arctic Silver 5 because it is conductive. And I told them I've never had any issues with uh, AS5 being conductive. And that if he has, he's been using way too much to begin with. So yeah, I, I know I overuse compound like that. There's probably too much for that smaller surface, but... It's not going to hurt anything, you know? Why worry? And you may be blinded, but I'm going to go ahead and turn the light towards my way here. So that I can I see the correct mounting here. I'm going to press that down. Get the clips installed. I'm going to have to get at some tricky angles to get that in, so I'll be right back with you. Alright, there we go. It's on nice and strong. I'm going to go ahead and plug the fan header into, well, the fan into the fan header here. Of course, I'm going to tighten a knot to make sure the cables don't go awry. And there we go. CPU and cooler and fan are all installed and good to go. So, uh, you may have picked up on the fact that this uses some very different memory uh, solutions here. Up at the top here we have four DIMMs, you know, not unlike today's system memory, but take a look at the sockets. That's no DDR1 socket. That's not even SD RAM socket, no. That is something called RD RAM or RIM socket. These were a proprietary solution bought up by Intel and I believe partnered with Dell and some other companies to incorporate RIM modules into or RIM module requirements into their next gen processors. So yeah. RIMs were expensive, they're in hot, and offered only marginally better performance, if any at all. So this here is one HP unit. You can see it's got two notches at the bottom. I mean, interesting fact about RIM modules is that uh, it requires all of the sockets to be full to work. So if you only had like two memory sticks, you would need to, you would need to buy a blank cartridge. It would just be a little PCB with no tracers or anything on it. It would just be a jumper to jump to the next memory module. If you don't have that, that system would not boot up. So, and this did require you to get four uh, memory components. I'm not going to say memory modules because that's not what they were. But it required you to get more. I would imagine that most kits at the time would have already come with spacers, but uh, yeah, no guarantee. I know for a fact that I don't have any spacers, so I had to buy four memory modules. And I am maxing the system out here. I'm giving it four 512 meg sticks to make two gigabytes. Because I want to run some kind of program or let some Windows updates install somewhat quickly. So yeah. That's why I had to buy four. It was like $26 or something like that. I got the board, the whole motherboard for that much. So that shows you how expensive some of these old things can still be. 
Now I will probably have a fan directly next to or over the memory modules to help keep them cool because I have read that they do run hot. I don't think it would be as bad as some old ECC memory Dell kits I've seen. Like I've seen some old Dell precision towers have memory that was designed to run at over 100C. It's like that does not sound safe in any way, shape, or form. So here's the board with the memory, CPU, and cooler installed. Um, seems to be about ready to go in the system, but because it has almost no USB ports, only the two, and I have no idea if they work or not, I went ahead and got one of these little PCI USB adapters. Um, it did not come with any drivers. I'm hoping Windows XP will be able to find them. But yeah, it's got four here and then one here for internal use. So that would go in like so. Realistically, it would come farther down to allow some uh, room for the video card to breathe. But at the moment, I actually do not have a video card because of the TI-4600 being dead. Or I suppose I could test it on here, but I don't think it'll work. I've also gone ahead and got a Sound Blaster Odyssey 2. Um, the name alone should ring a few bells of how good this product is. So, and that goes. And yeah. Next up, we need to have some way to install Windows. So I went ahead and got a couple of DVD drives, or one's a DVD drive, one's a CD drive. Now I ordered these because they said they were working. I have some of these, but I have no idea if they work. So this is a CD drive. This will be used to install Windows. Then in this package is a DVD drive that will be used to install anything that requires a DVD. And maybe I could test movie playback too. Yeah, that's a good idea actually. I'll do that. See if the system can play DVDs without issue. Because DVDs in 2000, 2001 were a new thing. The PS2 should come to mind with it being one of the early adopters of DVD. <laughs> DVD drive is so much shorter than the CD drive here. Look at this, can you see this? So much shorter. Now we do need a hard drive of course, so that's what this is. This is a brand new WD drive. This is a 160 gig, so it's really high capacity for the time, but I wanted it this big so that I could fit other stuff on it and not just Windows. So, uh, the first big issue is here, is that it's got a SATA interface. This is SATA 2. Obviously, the board has no SATA device of any kind. So, we need a way to connect this drive. And that's what this little thing is for. It'll allow for any IDE to go to a SATA and any SATA to go to IDE. It's reversible. It's pretty cool like that, actually. So if I go ahead and get the uh, interface here, comes with a SATA cable. One then goes into the drive, like so. And the other would go into here. I don't know why, it's got two uh, SATA connectors there. I'm not sure if it requires the uh, floppy connector adapter here to work here, since all we would need it for is data. But I will test it out either way. Now we need a way to obviously power the drive. The power supply has certainly doesn't have a SATA adapter on it. So, I got this cheap $1 or $2 adapter for 
IDE to shadow power. So that's how we would power the drive. And then I uh, just realized now that we need a ribbon cable. Huh, can I cheat the system and just plug her directly into what's going to be the floppy connector here? Does not look like I'm going to plug it into the floppy. I will figure something out. Either way, that's how everything here will, will connect. It's even got its own little jumper there. I don't know what that'll be for. But finally, we need a way to power the system up. I'm going to take these out so that I can lay them down flat. The power supply is a very old bugger that I've had laying around for years, literally. Uh, this is, uh, however you pronounce this, Allied, Allied. I'm using this one because one, it's 400 watts, two, this has a 40 amp 5 volt rail. Now older Pentium 4 and older Athlon systems require a high 5 volt rail amp. I could use a brand new power supply at like 500 watts, but if it only has a 15 amp a power delivery system on the 5 volts, which is what the processor and the DVD drives and everything else runs on back then, then <laughs> you would probably have a dead power supply, or at the very least a very hot one. And probably some extra smoke shows. So yeah. Um, obviously I don't have a video card right now because I tested this one to not work. I can test it again. But I think I am going to have to try to use a PCI one that I just find laying around and hope to God it works. Or just wait until the real video card I have from the time period arrives. I have a ATI Radeon All-in-Wonder 8500. Uh, it's coming from Canada and it says it'll be here in like August. <laughs> it's midway through July so you can see why... I'm wondering what's going on. Like I paid twenty dollars for shipping and it's going through snail mail. What a ripoff, right? Anyways, this this is good and all, but what good is a computer without a case? You know, need everything to fit in somewhere. So I went ahead and got some older model, very. Uh, clean looking antic case. This is the VSK 4000E. And I'm not going to unbox it. I will, however, build the system in it and show you the end result uh, right now. YouTube jump cut. Here we go. Okay, and this is the finished result. As you can see, the motherboard is taking up literally the entire space available to me. I bunched all the power supply cables above the DVD and CD drive here because there is some space above that where the power and USB cables are. So I just shoved everything up into the top corner here. It seems to work okay. DVD and CD drive went in nicely although I had to put the DVD drive in the bottom because it's, it is shorter as you saw. You can probably see here too. Quite a big difference. I had to do that because the 20-pin 20, the 20 cable there, uh, it was interfering with uh, this piece and otherwise would not have worked correctly. So I had to swap down, I had to swap my orientation to do that. I wanted to have the CD drive on the bottom so that it could uh, be on the very bottom and have it like weigh the system down a little bit so it's a little bit less top heavy because the power supply is here and now the drive cages and drives are there. And yeah. And one thing cool about this case is that if you have a very long video card, you can see that's got an AGP Pro slot. Now if it's very long, this plastic piece for the drive cage on the other side here, uh, maybe you can see that, maybe you can't, uh, comes off so you can have super long video cards. So. That's if you had like a, like let's say an old Radeon card with a Dell bracket. So you could have that in here without any issue. Uh, other
other than that, everything seemed to go in nicely. I need to check if my uh, front panel I.O. cables are in the right spot. A good thing is that the motherboard does have a USB uh, standoff, so I can use the front USB ports. And I've also gone ahead and put in the uh, sound card and USB uh, extender, you could call it. So that I can see if those work at a later date. But uh, I found one more fan header on the board, and I took full advantage by adding another 120mm fan up, up front. It's still got the stock and the base uh, fan there. I found out I had the CPU fan in the wrong header, so I had to rotate the fan. Uh, thankfully, the fan is only held in by two clips on either, on either side of it, so uh, that was good to just unclip, rotate the fan so, so that the cable would connect and be good. Now for the drive, the hard drive, you saw I was using a SATA to IDE adapter or vice versa. And I found out you could just plug it in directly to the board and then have a USB, a USB a SATA cable come out to it. Now like I said, I'm not sure if I need this a power adapter because it's going into the board from that angle because I was half thinking it would be connected to the drive itself but as you can see with the drive down here at the bottom that is not the case uh, as for powering the system up I will do that for another video because one it's got no video card so we couldn't see anything and two um I would like one the video card to come here and two I'm almost out of space on the camcorder so gotta make space and I'm done recording for today so if you guys enjoyed project I'm gonna call I'm gonna call this project space odyssey because 2001 computers pro, 2001 space odyssey old movie yep yeah, yep yeah, you get it now okay <laughs> anyways I can't wait to see how the system works and if it does work all nice and good I cannot wait to get you some old benchmarks and yeah, if you have a video card like the TI uh, 44600 in here, that should work just fine. Assuming this one works, I will test this in the system to see if it works. Although I've tested it in both of the systems you've seen on the side over here. There you go. Both of these boards here. Neither one of them worked, and I did also test it on this other motherboard I have that is socket 478 and I couldn't get any picture to come out of here either but this was laying on the floor for a while so maybe the board is just dead that I do not know I cannot confirm so I will continue this project in well whenever the video card arrives now for now uh, yep if you guys enjoyed project uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey, then please go ahead and leave a like, favorite, comment, share, and of course don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks, and we all. I'll see you in the future.